So, good evening everyone. It is day two of our Mindset Live event with me, Jay. Um, you can see all of my contact details down the um, left side of the video underneath my lovely mug. <laughs> um, also at the bottom of the screen you'll see that I created this presentation using a software called Presentar. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, it's an online based um, software that I got from a friend of mine and there is a link to some more information if you would like some more. Um, I have managed to work out a way to see comments. Um, I just need to click on the right button. Hey, hey, um, hey. So hopefully if we get some commenting tonight I will start be able recording. to see it. Um, I will just pause that video because that's really so, annoying. So, good evening everyone. There we go. Okay. Right, so I'll give it a couple of minutes, just make sure everyone who wants to get on can get on. Um, I hope this will find you well, and that you've got a lot of information out of yesterday, and that it will serve you, I suppose. So, oh, and it just said that this has disconnected. Hang on, let's see if it's still working. Um, skip ahead, reconnection successful, good job. Okay, so, three minutes past. We'll give it another minute or so, just make sure everyone who wants to get on can do. I've heard confirmation that other people can see it, which is awesome, so I'll just take a drink. And yeah, so like I said, I hope this finds everybody well. Um, and let's get underway. So, this week we are covering um, mindset. So yesterday we covered the introduction, how our mind works. Today we're covering the laws of the universe, which I'll go through in a second. Uh, tomorrow we're looking at how your mindset can work for you, which is gonna include some topics such as habits, what a paradigm is, um, how to change your bad habits, which is always a good thing to know. Um, day four, Thursday, we're gonna look at the knowing doing gap why we just don't do what we know how to do. I'm guilty of that, as is everybody else, I'm sure. Um, and also touching on how to be grateful for everything, including the negative stuff. And then day five, we're gonna summarize and recap. I'm gonna introduce you to the free gift um, and any further information or where you can find some further information. So, yesterday we covered, what are we? We said that we are a spiritual being that lives in a physical body. We covered the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. So the conscious mind, the top half of the circle, is your thinking brain, your educated brain. It's where you can reason. Um, it's got all of your higher faculties. So your reason, like I said, your will, your perception, your memory, your intuition, and your imagination. Your subconscious mind is your emotional mind. Can't choose. Has to absolutely accept everything that the thinking conscious mind gives it. The body fits in at that point because the mind is the control switch. Your brain is the electrical switching station that then controls the body. So what you think becomes what you feel, becomes what you vibrate. Remember we said about the law of vibration, you're in constant ocean of motion, you're always moving. What you are then vibrating, you're giving out as actions. You get the reaction back from the universe and that creates your results. And we said that um, it's best to go from thinking to action and always be focusing on what it is that you want, not what it is that you have now. Never focus on your current results, especially if they're negative. They will get better. You just have to convince yourself that they will and really believe it. We then had a very quick introduction to the laws of the universe, which is our um, subject for today. So let's get started. Our agenda, I have moved a couple of these around from the um, list that I put out at the end of yesterday's session, but they're still all there, all seven of them. We have the law of perpetual transmutation, the law of relativity, the law of vibration, which then creates the law of attraction, which is a secondary law, the law of polarity, the law of cause and effect, and the law of gender. So why are we covering this? Well, we're covering this because unlike any other form of animal life that has been created on this planet, we were given the power of choice or free will. Remember what I said, what we think is our choice, it's our free will. 
And along with this power comes certain responsibilities. So the capacity to choose does not involve freedom from the consequence of our choice. And there's a very famous saying, I can't remember where it's from, but you are free to choice, choose, but you are not free from the consequence of your choice. Um, these laws or rules which govern every single individual are as exact as the laws which govern the material universe. So obviously the laws of gravity and things like that, it is equal everywhere on this planet. And on Mars, the same gravity is equal and everywhere on Mars. So we can act in accordance with these laws or we can completely disregard them. It's completely our choice, but we cannot alter them. So we cannot try and make the law a certain way to benefit ourselves. It doesn't work like that. The law forever operates and holds you to strict accountability and there's not the slightest allowance made for ignorance. So the excuse of, well, I didn't know, doesn't wash with the universe. It doesn't care. Hence why we're going through these today. So the law of attraction, the law of vibration, will deliver to you what you do not want as quickly and as certainly as it will deliver what you want. So if you're constantly focusing on what you don't want, that's all you're going to get. To get what you want, you need to decide what it is that you want. You can't just constantly think, well, I don't want that. You need to give yourself and you give, need to give the universe the thing that you do want and focus on that. The ownership of money and property, for example, comes as a result of doing things in a certain way, which is by law. Um, and those who do things in a certain way, whether on purpose or accidentally, they might not even realise that they're in harmony with the universal laws, get rich. Those who do not do things in a certain way, no matter how hard they work, will never ever be able to get the money that they deserve. Excuse me. Okay, so that information and the reason why we're covering this is covered in a book called The Science of Getting Rich, which is by Wallace D. Wattles. Um, and there is also an expanded version of this um, that Bob Proctor did years and years ago as a, um, as a sequence of um, audio files and a workbook that really picks apart that book. Um, that was the first kind of course that I did um, with the Proctor Gallagher Institute that got me into this information. Um, and of course, I then had to get the book because I am an avid reader, as you can probably tell. So we're covering this because if we are ignorant to these laws and we're not in harmony with them and we go against them without even realising, because we don't know them, we are never going to get what we want from our lives. Um, be it getting rich, which could be in a money sense, or it could be in happiness, or it could just be in like your environment. It doesn't necessarily have to mean the money that's coming into your bank account. So let's check out these, um, these laws and have a look. So the first one, the law of perpetual transmutation. It basically means that energy moves into physical form. So the images that you hold in your mind, the most often, will materialise into physical form. So as I said before, if you're constantly focusing on, I don't want to be here, I don't want this, this isn't the result that I want, that's what you're going to get, more of that result. Whereas if you spend a few hours every day, it doesn't have to be in one block, maybe five minutes here, five minutes there, daydreaming effectively, using your imagination to create the image of the thing that you want in your mind, the universe has kind of no choice but to put it into physical form. Obviously, there are a few caveats to that, which will be covered under a couple of the other laws later on. But let's see this in, in um, picture form, because like I said yesterday, we are um, visual learners. We need to see a picture. So remember our trusty little stick person from yesterday. There is an infinite power that flows to and through us at all times. Um, some people call it um, spirit. Some people call it God. Some people call it the universe. Anything that it is referred to, I'm going to refer to it as um, universal spirit because um, that's what Bob Proctor calls it. Um, but it's basically this big abundant infinite power that is flowing through all of us at all times and what it does is it allows you to use your imagination to build ideas 
So if you are open and in a good vibration, so you're open to new ideas, all of a sudden an idea might just pop into your head. Don't know where it came from. It could have come from literally anywhere, but it's that power that is moving to and through you. And you can't imagine or create an idea that you are incapable of following through. It doesn't work. So if you can't physically do something, the universe won't give you the idea to do it. Okay, so you take that power and you've created your thought and you're building an idea. And we'll call it an A type idea. That idea starts to build and it creates emotions, it stirs up your emotions. So what you're doing is you're thinking the idea, you're getting emotionally involved with it and building emotions towards it. That then puts your body into an A-type vibration, creates your actions. As we said yesterday, actions oh, create reactions from the universe, which then creates your physical results. So as it says here, the emotions are expressed with and through the body. The body is moved into action, which produces the results. So you get the idea. You really, really get involved with that idea, emotionally involved with it. You cause emotions. The emotions set off the vibration in your body, which creates the action, which creates your physical results. So the law of perpetual transmutation says that the non-physical level of life is always moving into physical form. So as a quote I mentioned yesterday, anything you can think, you can create in your physical world. So the physical level of life is the manifestation of the non-physical, which is a bit of a mouthful. So the physical level of life is the manifestation of the non-physical. So if you think about it, everything we have nowadays had to come from somewhere. Look back a hundred years, phones didn't exist. Um, just over a hundred years ago, airplanes didn't exist. The Wright brothers, when they were trying to get that creation that they made off the ground, everyone thought they were completely mad. Why are you doing that? We don't, we're human, we don't need to fly. What are you doing? Their own father thought they were completely lost it, but they did it. They believed in an idea so, so much. They had the idea from the universe. They got emotionally involved with it. They then got ideas of how to put it together, which is how it works, which I'll go through in another seminar, um, probably on my next live event of how to build goals and create your goals and what happens when you're creating goals. But they got the information, they worked it out and they just kept trying, they didn't give up. And they got the airplane into the air. Nowadays, we can cross from the UK where I am to Australia in one flight. Ten years ago, you couldn't do that. You had to stop off on the way to refuel. But technology is always evolving. And these ideas have always been here. So the idea for phones has always been here as long as humans has been here. But we didn't have the capability to create it. We needed to evolve. And if you look back even the last five years, the amount of technological advances that we've gone through, they are all ideas that people have had from the universe. And there are loads of examples in The Science of Getting Rich um, and in quite a few of the other personal development books of people just spare of the moment coming up with an idea from almost like nowhere, putting it into practice and human race taking on an extra jump. They can even say it was back to the cavemen as well. They didn't know how to make fire at first, but all of a sudden one day somebody had this idea, rub these two sticks or these two rocks together, woof, fire. And then clothing. We started losing all of our fur because we created clothing. We didn't need the fur anymore. Obviously when they were cavemen, they were using other animals' skins for their clothing, but now it's evolved into the cloth that we wear today. So it all evolved from an idea that one person had, or a group of people had, that they then put into motion, they got emotionally involved, evolved, involved in it, sorry, created the vibration, created the action, universe reacted, new results. I hope that made sense. I will just double check, see if there are any comments. Um, and if I need to cover that again. Oh, look, it's going a bit slow. <laughs>
Nope. Good, okay. So, carrying on then. The law of relativity. So nothing is good or bad, big or small, hot or cold, anything, until it's related to something else. An example. Think of this. It's a box. <coughs> I've labelled the box B. B just is a box. It's, it's just a, a yellow box. But when you introduce A, B is all of a sudden big. So B was a box, just a normal box, and B is now big. A is small compared to B. Introduce another box, B is now small. A is smaller, but B is now small compared to C. But what we need to remember is, is that the box B is still just a box. It's just a box, it's labelled B. Same as C might be the biggest of these three boxes, but it's only big when it's compared to something else. I'll give you an example. When I'm working in schools, because um, I am a qualified teacher and I'm doing a, a bit of supply work here, here and there, because I absolutely love working with the kids, I'll go into a school and it'll be art, say. And one of the kids or a couple of the kids will go, oh, I hate art, I am rubbish at drawing. And I turn around to them and I say, rubbish compared to what? And they go, I'm just rubbish. It's like, okay, so are you rubbish compared to a toddler or your three-year-old self? And they go, well, no, I'm better than a three-year-old. It's like, so ha. Huh? So you're only rubbish at drawing if you compare yourself to someone who is a better drawer. I love to draw. I love to paint. I'd like to think I'm quite good at it, but if you compare my work to Van Gogh, say, or Monet, or any of the other um, artists, even Banksy, my drawings are pretty rubbish. <laughs> but if they're only compared to what I could do 10 years ago, then they're pretty good. And that's a key thing that we can do. Things are only relative when you compare it to somebody else or something else. There's a lovely quote from Einstein that says every single person and everything on the planet is a genius. But if you compare a fish's ability, if you, if you set up like a test where you test a fish's ability to climb a tree, he's going to think he's a failure his whole life. And it's, a, it's il illustrated with a lovely picture. There's like a monkey, a fish, a rabbit, an elephant. And it says, if you compare, if you test all of those creatures on their ability to climb a tree, the monkey's going to come out on top. And the poor fish is going to think he's an absolute failure. If you test that same group of people um, on their ability to swim, the fish is going to win hands down. And the monkey's going to feel a little bit down, downheartened. So never, ever, ever compare yourself to somebody else. You might be really, really, really good at something, but bad at something else. We all have our own individual set of skill sets. Set of skill? Yeah, set of skills. So only ever compare yourself to yourself. You're not in competition with anybody else. The only competition you will ever have is with you. So stop comparing yourself to other people. And you'll be a lot happier. Trust me, it does work. <laughs> Moving on to the next one then. The law of vibration. We did touch on this yesterday. So it's basically everything vibrates, nothing rests. The wall vibrates at the frequency of a wall, which is what makes it a wall. Um, the pen, which I had yesterday, which has wandered off somewhere, vibrates as a pen. It is a thing in that vibration. It is a pen. Your thoughts control your vibration. So whatever you're thinking, excuse me, whatever you're thinking, creates your emotions, creates your vibration. And our conscious awareness of our vibration is how we're feeling. So it's kind of like a circular motion that you can kind of jump in between. So you can either focus on how you're feeling, which will then tell you what your vibration is, or you can, if you're feeling rubbish, or if you notice you're getting a few bad results here and there, your vibration's a bit off, think about what you're thinking. Be aware of what you're thinking at all times. So if you're noticing the things aren't quite right or something doesn't feel right or you feel a bit off, sit down, take a few breaths and work out how you're feeling, which will then tell you what you're thinking and then work out what your thoughts are. 
you can then switch your thoughts, which is what I will cover tomorrow. But as a very, very basic now, so I don't leave you with a, huh, you shift your mindset by focusing on what you are grateful for, is one example. So, for example, if I wake up in the morning having a really bad day, I could be grateful for the fact that I've woken up this morning. I had a nice warm bed that I got out of. I had fresh clothes to wear, which is the way I get through doing the washing every week because I hate doing the washing, but I love having clean clothes. So you focus on the positive, find the good, and that will start to switch your vibration and how you're feeling. So the only things you can attract to you are those things that are in harmonious vibration with you. So the law of attraction is the secondary law to the law of vibration. Whatever you're in vibration wise is what you will attract. So if your body is in bad vibration, you're feeling crappy, you're just kind of oozing bad vibes for whatever reason, you will only attract bad to you. So shift your mindset, get in a better vibration and you will attract the good. Let's have a look at the next one. The law of polarity opposites everything has an opposite hot cold in out up down um outside inside always look for the good in absolutely everything could be a really bad situation that you've walked into but look for the good you will find it there is always some good and tell people when you find the good in them so you could be standing at the water fountain at work say or at school like i am sometimes or in the staff room and you notice something that somebody does, or you've noticed something around work that somebody does, and they walk in. Point it out to them. Let them know that you noticed. It's the best thing you can do for someone is to tell them that you noticed. Even if they don't go, oh yeah, that's great, oh I did whatever, they might snap your head off because they're having a really bad day. You've done your good thing, you've noticed the good, you've pointed it out. Good ideas, good vibration. And it's explained like this. Every single thing that happens can be negative or positive. But if it's negative, it's also positive. And if it's positive, it's also negative. Everything just is. So if, for example, ooh, hello, you've got a situation over here that is really negative, something really bad has happened. There must be something equally positive about it. Okay? Think of it like um, you lose your job. That's really bad. You've got bills to pay. But if you can focus on looking for the good in that situation, an even better opportunity will present itself. So if there's something negative going on, know that somewhere in that there is an equal and opposite positive no idea what it is it will show up but it is there you just have to look for it and you will find it let's move on to the next one the law of rhythm the whole world is rhythm we're all in rhythm with the world the tide goes out the tide comes in night follows day the season spring summer autumn winter winter always follows autumn spring always follows winter any downswing will be followed by an equal and opposite upswing, like the law of polarity. So for every down, there will be an up. So if you're going through a really rough patch at the moment, like for example, I was in a really rough patch, um, not quite this late in the year last year, but last June, really, really, really like crash and burn the whole world ending kind of situation. But there was an up and I have come out of it. And I feel so much better now with all the stuff that I've learned over the last year that I'm sharing with you guys. This is tip of an iceberg kind of stuff. But for every down, there is an up. Okay? bit like the sine wave. It just goes up and down. And it's equal. If you look along the top, these are all equally high as they are equally low. So there is a rhythm. Like I said, the tide goes out, the tide comes back in. The birds sing in the morning, the sun comes up, the sun goes down. Yes, I'm aware, obviously, in the northern latitudes and the southern, there's three months of the year at least where there is no daylight. But the sun will still come up eventually. So there's always a rhythm, we just have to find it. Always look for the good. 
Next one, cause and effect. I'm sure you've heard of this. It's whatever you send into the universe comes back. Whatever cause you do, you get an effect. Action, reaction. Like I said, when we're in a certain vibration, we create actions. The universe returns to us equal reactions. All reactions are equal and opposite. Treat everyone with total respect and it will come back to you. It might not come back from that individual person, but it will come back. Um, a seminar I watched um, a couple of weeks ago from the Proctor Gallagher Institute that was just streaming on YouTube, um, it, it went into um, all the good that you give out. Nature abhors a vacuum, hates a vacuum. So if you're constantly giving out good, it can't, there, there can't be anything here. This has got to be here at all times. There's no, there's no gap in between. So if you're giving out good, you're getting good in return. Instant. It might be not from the thing you're giving good to. So you could be really helpful to someone at work, um, help them out with a job. You don't even get a thank you. It doesn't matter because the good will come to you from somewhere else. Never go into something worrying about what you're going to get out of a situation. Don't go to something and say, oh, well, if I do this for somebody else, then I'll get that in return. Um, you could think, I don't know, oh, if I drive this group of people to the party, then they'll buy my dinner. Don't ever think of what you can get out of it. Concentrate on what you're giving. In that example, you're driving a group of people or a group of your friends to a party to have a good time. That's the good. You don't need anything back from it, but you will get compensated in return. So a lovely little example from a, a school. So a cause is a why. The cause is the reason something happened. The effect is what? The effect is the result of what happened. So in this kind of thing, in, in generic cause and effect, you've got the sun um, is very hot. The cause is that the ice cream melts. You water the seeds that you've planted, the seeds will grow. On the other side, you plant the seeds and you don't water them, they don't grow because you haven't given them what they need to grow. So you're not rewarded with the seeds growing. The sun comes out when it's raining. Get a rainbow. Kyra loves looking for rainbow. My little girl absolutely loves it. She absolutely loves it when the sun's out and it's raining. She's just everywhere trying to find these rainbows. It's brilliant to see. And then the law of gender. So every single seed that is planted, be it a, a seed of a vegetable or a fruit or an idea in the brain or in the mind, sorry, Every seed has a gestation or an incubation period. For example, the bigger the idea, the bigger the dream, the longer the incubation period that's needed. Ideas are spiritual seedlings and your goals will only manifest when the time is right and not before. So there is a set period of time for every single goal to manifest in the real world, in the physical world. You cannot possibly predict when that will be. All you need to do is take each step as it's presented and just carry on believing that it will happen. And it will, but it may take a little bit of time. So, for example, they, I found um, the life cycle of a strawberry. So you plant the seed and you give the seed everything that it needs. You give it the soil, you give it water, it's got some sunlight. It needs all of those things. That's like the first step. The seed, excuse me, the seed will then germinate, it will sprout, and then it grows gradually, round and round, for the set period of time that it needs to grow for until the strawberries start to grow on the plant. So with a strawberry, you get your sprout, you get your seedling, you get your plant, you get your flowers, the bees are then needed to come and pollinate the flowers, and then X number of days later, they develop into strawberries. But only if you carry on giving that plant what it needs. You can't just stick a seed in the ground and expect it to grow. No, you need to look after it. It needs water. You need to make sure the pesky kitty cats don't come and dig it up and use it as a toilet. You need to keep watering it. 
need to keep giving it what it needs, keeping it in the sunlight. I'm sure you remember as a kid in science, you did that experiment possibly in your school, I know we did in ours and my little one's doing it in hers, where you plant four different runner bean seeds. One has no water, one has too much water, one is just right, it's got everything that it needs, it's got water, it's got soil, and you plant one in the dark. And the one in the dark will grow, but not as strongly as the one that's in the light. So with any plant or seed or idea or dream, it needs a certain habitat environment for it to grow. Otherwise, it just won't grow. You can't get an idea from the universe and go, ha ha, this is a great idea, write it down and then sit back and do nothing. It doesn't work like that. As you get the idea, you take the first step. As you complete the first step, you'll see the next step and the next step and the next step. You've got to keep doing those steps, otherwise the dream will die. It will still be there and it will cause a constant frustration to you. I want all this stuff, but I'm not getting it. It's just not here. Because you're not taking the action. You have to take the actions to make things grow. And in the example of the seeds and plants, they need water. They need to be looked after. Otherwise, they just won't grow. These are all subsidiary laws. So in The Science of Getting Rich, Wallace Wattles explains that all of these laws operate in co coordination with each other and the one great law, which is that energy is. It just is. All physical and mental science is based on this one great law and its cooperation with the seven sub sub subsidiary laws. Hard word. So energy just is. It's not positive, it's not negative, it hasn't got any connotations to it or anything like that. Energy just is. And like I said, there are secondary laws, but they are all underneath these seven. So for example, the law of attraction is below, sits below the law of vibration. Because without vibration, you can't have attraction. So just check the comments and make sure that everything is coming across loud and clear. See if anyone's got anything to say. We're doing good for time, so let's just have a quick look. No, no, that's all good. Okay. So, in summary, we have covered the laws of the universe. We've covered the law of perpetual transmutation. So everything that you give out, you will get back. We've covered the law of relativity. Everything is only relative when you compare it to something else. Otherwise, it just is. As I said, energy just is. Um, and just one point I want to pick up on, on the law of perpetual transmutation. As I said during that, obviously you get your thoughts. You get emotionally involved in the thoughts. You build the ideas. You build the emotions, you build the vibration, and you get the action and reaction. And then the law that I was referring to that I said is also very important with perpetual transmutation is the law of gender. So you can have this idea, you get emotionally involved in it, you create the actions and the vibration. It then has to gestate for this certain amount of time. We then had the law of relativity, like I said. So things are only relative when you compare them to something else, our little boxes that we looked at. Um, the law of vibration. You are in a constant ocean of motion. This body that you live in is constantly moving. It's constantly vibrating. So far, she can't see it. But whatever it's vibrating at, the harmony, the frequency it's vibrating at is what you will attract to you. Bad vibration, bad reaction from the universe. Good vibration, you get what you want. It's that simple, which is... It's simple, but we make it so much more complicated than it is. Then we had the law of polarity. Every single thing that happens is equally good and equally bad. If it's only a little bit good, then it's only a little bit bad. If it's really bad, it will also be really good. Might not be at exactly the same time, because we can only focus on one pole at a time, but look for the good in every situation and you will find it. It is there, you just have to trust and believe it's there and you'll find it. The law of rhythm. What goes up must come down. What goes down must come up. It's a rhythm. Nature is rhythmic. The tides come in, the tides go out. 
the sun goes up, the sun comes down. Law of cause and effect. Every single cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. No such thing as chance. No such thing as luck. Nothing in the entire universe ever happens unless it happens by law. You have to do something to get an effect. Action, reaction. And then the law of gender. Be patient. If it's a big idea, if it's a big dream, it's going to take a lot longer than if it's a small dream. So changing your whole life and everything that's in it, becoming a multimillionaire when you've only earned 20 grand in a year before, it's going to take time. But just know that it will. You just have to follow the steps and you will get there. So homework tonight. Hopefully you did the homework from last night. It's quite simple. Draw the little stick man, label it and explain it to someone else and then send us any aha moments. Tonight's homework, I want you to write down the law which has had the most impact on you and then think about why. So the law that's had the biggest impact on you, the one where you've gone, oh, so that's why that happens. It could be the cause and effect. It could be the law of vibration, the law of attraction. For me, I think it is the law of gender that things take time because you want things to happen now. We live in a world where instant gratification is all around us. All the games we play, we get instant feedback. Um, we pick up the phone if we want to talk to someone, we get instant feedback. We don't have to wait three weeks for a letter to come through the post. <clears throat> Sorry. We get instant. Everything is instant. But to have a big result and a big goal takes time. Be patient. Enjoy the journey. Don't just miss out and be really frustrated because you're waiting for the end and then give up because it's not happening yet. No, no, no. Enjoy the journey. You will get there. Okay, so write down the law which has the most impact on you and why. And you can either share it in the group or share it with me um, or keep it private. It's entirely up to you. And then number two, share in the group any aha kind of moments from today's session. So tomorrow, session three, how your mindset can work for you. We are going to go over paradigms again because they are key to your mindset because that's where your mindset is. We're going to look at what a habit is. <coughs> Something stuck in my throat today. We look at what habits are, um, how they're formed and how we can replace them. You cannot just stop a bad habit. You have to replace it and then retrain your paradigm. You're reprogramming yourself. Try and stop something. Even the strongest willpower in the world mm -mm, ain't happening. That's why you'll find a lot of people, if they just go cold turkey when they're trying to stop smoking, they're either re-smoking within a couple of weeks or they're putting on an incredible amount of weight because they've turned to, I don't know, Skittles. They've got to have something in their hand. They need that, that habit. So they turn to something else, which is usually sweets because that gives us good response in the same place. But I'll explain all that tomorrow. Um, we're going to look at, are you a follower or a leader? And why it's okay to be both. Because your mindset will de be dependent on whether you are a follower or whether you are a leader. Going to go through some tips for shifting your mindset. And also how to leave everyone with an impression of increase. Which is really key to your mindset. If you're putting good out, you can only get good back. So that's the theory behind that one. Okay, I will just quickly check, see if there are any questions or any comments. Let's have a look. No. Okay, if you do have any questions that come up after you've watched this or watched the replay, feel free to get in touch. Um, like I said, all of my contact details are just below the video here. I would love it if you could either follow me on Facebook, maybe drop Rethink Your Perspective, a nice little follow or a like on Facebook or Instagram. Pinterest, if you use it, I put lots of stuff up on Pinterest um, on my personal boards, which are some of them are um, live to the public as well as my own refresh, uh, rethink board. Um, YouTube, I have a few videos going up on there. These replays will be going up on the YouTube page as well. Twitter, mm, I'm not so much on because I'm not quite sure on it yet. And I'm getting better at making things a little bit more succinct. 
Um, and then, yeah, my LinkedIn. If you are on the professional platforms, so am I. Okay, so I hope you have had um, a really lovely session with me today, that you've got some value from it. And I hope to see you on here again the same time tomorrow. And look at that. I started it on time. I finished it on time. Win-win. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. Like I said, I welcome any feedback as long as it's constructive. If you think this was absolute rubbish, let me know. But then let me know how to make it better. I have no issues with being criticised. I'm over that. I can take criticism all day long as long as you tell me where I need to change. Give me some hints. Give me some tips. Feel free to get in touch. I would love to have a conversation with you. And I hope this finds you well and that you have a lovely rest of your evening. So I'm going to stop the recording and say goodnight. Bye.